your own hallelujah. I can't do it for you. There's a song written in each of your hearts. Only you can sing. And when you sing, enemies flee. When you sing, prison walls fall down. And when you sing, the heavens evade the earth. Just begin to lift up your own hallelujah. Raise it like a banner. Raise it like a flag. Let it rise in the middle of a storm. Let it rise. Let it rise. Like a symphony to the king. Everything in you, Jesus. We raise it all up.
We're going to celebrate communion this morning. And communion is one of the sacraments that we celebrate here at RVC along with baptism. And sacrament is just something that God instructs us to do to reveal to those around us the change that's happened in our hearts. And honestly, I think to remind ourselves of the change that's happened. Um, before I get started, um, I'm going to ask you all to take your your communion elements if you haven't uh, been through this with us before there's a secret there's a little film on the top of the tab um, that actually opens up to uh, give you access to the wafer at the top uh, and then the tab itself pulls up um, for the juice but I want to talk a little bit about communion before we get started um, if you go ahead and bring the the verse up I want to read through that passage and then talk about it just for a minute. Uh, Matthew 26, 26 through 28. Um, this is at the Last Supper, uh, the night that Jesus was arrested, uh, and the next day he would be crucified. Um, it says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for their forgiveness of sins. Now, this was happening at the Passover. Uh, and Passover was a celebration that the Jews observed every year, remembering the time they were in Egypt. Uh, and at the Passover in Egypt, it was while the plagues were going on when Pharaoh wouldn't let God's people out of their bondage. And the tenth and final plague was the angel of death, which, which God said was going to sweep through Egypt. And the way the Jews protected themselves was by sacrificing a lamb and using the blood of the lamb to mark their homes. And it said the angel of death would pass over and not touch those. And so every year, and it had been almost 1,500 years by the time we have, we have Jesus in the upper room, every year the Jews celebrated the Passover, remembering how God had freed them from bondage. And there was a ritual. It was, it was the same dinner called the Seder. Every year, it was the same dishes. It was the same things said. It was the same ritualistic observance of this. And so when Jesus, in the middle of this, changes a script, it would have been pretty shocking to his disciples. Wait, wait, that's, that's not what you're supposed to say. And Jesus took this opportunity to point back to what happened in Egypt and essentially say, for 1,500 years, we've been looking backwards to see how God freed us from bondage. But that's not what it was really about. You thought you were remembering what God had done. What you were really doing was anticipating what God was going to be doing right here. The Passover lamb was not what had happened in Egypt. The Passover lamb was Jesus, who didn't free Israel from bondage but came to free the world from bondage. As John the Baptist said, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that was the invitation that Jesus was giving to his disciples that night in the upper room. And that is the invitation that God gives to us. So when we celebrate communion, we're not just taking bread and juice. We are honoring 
and remembering the fact that Jesus is the Passover lamb. And what happened in Egypt was really a, an indication of what God was planning to do through Jesus. And so I would ask you as we take these elements, keep that in mind. Keep the invitation of God in mind that the change has happened in us because of the blood of Jesus. So with that said, I invite you to celebrate with me. Um, go ahead and take your wafer. And as Jesus says, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. And then he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So I would just invite you as you go from this place, as you, as you live your life this week, keep in mind who Jesus has been to us, who Jesus invites us to become and carry this with you throughout the week. And if I can ask you to pass your, your, uh, leftovers to the aisle so they can be collected. Thank you.
as the Son of God Hung on a cross to die But not even death
God with an open heaven. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. This isn't something that we are striving for. This is something that Jesus paid for. Jesus fulfilled this. Oh, come on. We're not, we're, we're, we're not just crying out that oh that he would. It's oh that he has. Oh that you have poured out an open heaven. Oh that you are available. Oh that you do pour out your presence. Oh that you're with us now, God. Oh come on. That you're a generous God. And that you're with us. And so we celebrate a God who's with us and has an open heaven. Come on. of God to touch you. We, we have our prayer team up front. We'd like to just partner with you as we linger a few more moments in the presence of God. If you would like for us to lay hands on you as, as the Lord is already touching you, we would just like to agree with what God wants to do. And right here, right now, no matter what it is, God wants to take us in deeper to His presence. He wants us to be more aware of an open heaven that can impact every area of our life. And right here, right now, God is saying that I want some of you to taste of me like you've never tasted of me before. Oh, come on. Just extend your hands. Oh, come on. He wants to pour out and pour out and pour out and pour out. I want a richness of His presence is pouring out a majestic God. He's beautiful. He's rich. He's tender. He's merciful. He's kind. And He's saying, if you would just know that I'm near and come close, everything will change in your life. Everything will change. Come on, no hindrances right now. No hindrances. No shame. No condemnation. No guilt. Just be touched by the tender God of mercy. By the tender God of mercy. on if he's compelling you would you step out would you step into something new would you come to know me greater on this day friends we're not waiting for revival and revival's not coming we are a of the kingdom and therefore everything about my life is revival. Come on, let that stir in you. I'm a person of the kingdom. I'm a son and daughter of God and so everything about my life is revived and I get to enter in to the richness of a near God and be filled again and again.
don't you feel his mercy this morning? I hear the wooing nature of God saying, don't you feel my mercy? Don't you know that I'm with you? Don't you know that I'm for you? Don't you know that you are blessed and highly favored? Don't you know that you're the temple of God? Don't you know you're the vessel for the Holy Spirit? Don't you know you're my dwelling place? Don't you know I have deep love and compassion for you? Don't you know I know exactly what you're going through? Don't you know that I know you? Don't you know that I know you? And that I want you? And that I've called you? And that you're mine? Don't you know that your citizenship is in my house? It's in my kingdom? It's with me? Don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know the richness of my glory is all around you and all in you? Don't you know that you can break off every chain? Don't you know you're free in me? Because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Don't you know that you're free in me? Don't you know you don't have to search anymore? Don't you know you're home? Don't you know you're home? Don't you know? with me this morning that all we want is all of you God no distractions no encumbrances things that hinder things that try to block things that try to confuse things that try to frustrate none of those things are becoming bigger in our life in the knowledge of your presence with us and that we want you, God. We've decided. We've decided all our fountains, all our drinking places, all our places where we become filled and satisfied, where all our desires are met, all of our fountains, they are in you, God. Because you are a God who never fails and never lets up. All our fountains are in you. All our desires are fulfilled in you. <laughs> Life becomes adequate when we know that we're in your kingdom. surrender to your way and your will, God. Yes, Lord. I just sense some of us might just have a yes in our heart for God today. That, that whatever it is for you, you feel His nearness and you're saying yes. Yes, I'm going to move past anything. That has tried to hold me back. I'm going to move past anything that I've partnered or aligned with. And I'm going to just say yes to you, God. Oh, come on. Would you, would you, if, if you have a yes in your heart, would you release a yes this morning? Would you release a yes? A yes, whatever you want. Yes, all the good stuff you have, God. Yes, all of your presence. Yes, your all-consuming fire. Yes, the waters that flow like rivers. Yes, God. Yes, yes, yes. Let's just give God a hand this morning and a shout as we transition. We love you, Lord. We're thankful. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. You're good. You're 
you're worthy, you're kind. Oh, come on. I see some of y'all, and I know he's been good to you. I see some of you out there, and you look like the kindness of God is sitting on your shoulders. take a short break this morning you can meet somebody new you can get some coffee if you are a next gen uh i am next gen champion you know giant slaying world changer you can meet manny and ashley in the youth room uh otherwise we'll continue with service in just a few moments god bless you and thank you for being here this morning morning, Ridgecrest Vineyard Church. All right. Welcome, everyone. I want to just welcome you this morning to um, our gathering, our celebration. Uh, so glad you're here this morning. And uh, if this is your first time with us, we'd like to connect with you. Um, or if you have a prayer request, there's a con- it should be a connection card in the seat back pocket in front of you or near you. And you can uh, get this back to us during the offering time, or you can get it back to us uh, at guest services out in the front, uh, in the lobby, uh, after service. So we'd love to connect with you or come alongside and pray with you. I love that. You know, you can have over, like, you know, yourself just praying or a whole community just lifting up um, that request, a petition before the Lord in prayer. All right. Um, you know, I, some of us were able to go to Bethel this weekend and uh, this week, and I got to celebrate my 18-year anniversary with my wife. And, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, beautiful. We had to celebrate with friends, and we also got to um, uh, celebrate my birthday, which was on, on Friday, yeah, 20, forever 21, but I feel like 60, right? I was like, you know, and, and uh, I got a word, Pastor Validia, when I was at the conference, I got a word. You know, Psalms 30, verse 5 says, weeping may endure for the night, but, but coffee comes in the morning. How many know that? That's the... The new NJV, I don't know if you have the NJV, it's the new Jerry version. You have that one? Oh. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. 
these coffee jokes are getting out of hand. I just tell you, I don't know. Th thank you to my fan club. I do have a fan club. I get coffee jokes in, uh, in my inbox and in my texts. You know, you can you can text coffee at rvclife.org or email coffee at rvclife.org and uh, I'll get your coffee joke. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we're gonna do some throwbacks here. You know, in the coming weeks, just to let you know. Hopefully, this morning you got a bulletin, and in your bulletin there's some information. I'd like to share with you about what's going on here at the Richcrest Vineyard Church. Um, I want to first highlight for you that, you know, Mondays we have our community game night um, happening here at 6 o'clock. And at the same time, the youth, uh, next gen youth also meet. Uh, there, there's like over 20, almost 30 youth there this, uh, this Monday. It's an awesome thing. So if you have youth, like, you know, high school, junior high, bring them to our youth activity, and you can also hang out. We have pizza and games, some really interesting games that we're playing. I, I don't know, Scott, those are kind of interesting. Um, they just let you know that our, our Bible study is on break right now that we're doing on Monday, so, that, so you can just jump in straight into the game night and, and uh, bring your kids, bring your family. It's a great time to, to gather. Also, I want to let you know School of Kingdom Ministry Right, they're meeting up on Tuesdays. Great ministry. If you want to learn how to move in and, and, and be activated in the kingdom of God, come to School of Kingdom Ministry Tuesdays at 6.30 um, p.m. And then uh, we have our midweek message on Wednesdays at, you know, here for a midweek recharge. If you need a recharge, um, that's where we uh, do that. And the women are continuing their Bible study uh, on Thursday nights. What an amazing study, Elijah. It's just prophetic, profound. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I've been hearing a lot of good testimonies about uh, what's going on there. Also want to invite you to our Brave Ministry that's happening up on 6, uh, this Friday at 6.30 p.m. All right, yeah. You want healing hearts and mending souls? You want to check that out? Uh, Ms. D, Ms. D, she's the one that leads it for us. Awesome ministry, healing uh, for your soul. All right, and I want to highlight for you our share meal activity this Saturday. A lot of things going on this Saturday. We're like, we just bundled this up. <laughs> we're like, how do we do it? We just bundled it up. So we're, we're going to be at Leroy Jackson Park. We have a, you know, the way we're going to celebrate our three-year anniversary as a church and our two-year, bless you, uh, a refuge um, we're gonna play. We're gonna do a three-on-three -three basketball tournament. That's what we're gonna celebrate. <laughs> I was like, "Well, I have cake there too and food." And well, but the the highlight is three-on-three -three, uh, tournament. So just come prepared for that. It'll be there at the Leroy Jackson Park. It's gonna be a lot of fun for the whole family. We'll have a bounce house. Uh, we're gonna have a dunk tank. No, okay, not dunk tank. That dunk tank was cool though. That last time. Amen. All right. Um, so I wanted to share with you our vision here at the Rich Christ Vineyard Church. If you didn't know, now you know that we, we, are, we are, 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 as a church, we seek, sow, and serve. Can I get that slide up there, uh, James? We seek, sow, and serve. And here at the Rich Christ Vineyard Church, we, we exist to expand the kingdom of God. We do that by making disciples, by expressing extravagant worship. You know, uh, I love that, you know, that we get to worship, and we just worship until we're just like, Got no more to give, right? And then we go a little more. Uh, all right. And then uh, the last thing, you know, we want to highlight here is that we, we are also expanding the kingdom of God by eradicating addiction in our communities. And we do that by building champions. And so I want to, where's James? There is J Big James. There is Big James right there. That James right here. All right. <laughs> you know who I'm talking to you. I want to invite him to share his testimony. Uh, James is... Uh, we call him Big James because we have another James, and he's just bigger. <laughs> and he's going to share with, uh, with us uh, just how God's been moving in his life, uh, was it, what, you know, how he came, what God's done, and what he's doing now. Uh, thank you, sir. So uh, my name is James, and I was in my addiction for 24 years. Uh, I started at the age of 20 when I was in prison. So on and off, I've tried to seek the Lord. And, you know, kind of half-heartedly and whatnot. So it's been a struggle. And a few months ago, like sitting in this cell, and I just hear a, a voice in my head. He's like, are you ready to listen yet? Like, are you ready to listen or do you want to keep trying it your way? And I was like, well, I think I can still do it my way. Like, I got this figured out. And... Coming up with different excuses to keep doing the same routine over and over always led to the same stuff. So I get up one morning and I'm doing my insulin and this kid had come in in the middle of the night and he's like, hey man, like, like you look like you might have done some time before. I'm like, ah, maybe a time or two, you know? So he says, look, I got a weird question for you. Do you think God put you in positions like this so that you can help other people? And I was just like, 
nah, never. So it really made me start thinking. And I spent that time getting clean in jail, and it's the first time. I have 67 days clean today. Thank you. It's the longest I've had clean in 16 years. I was clean for about a year and a half, and that was on sure willpower. No, no mistake that back then, looking back, it was God. It wasn't me doing it. So I turned to that same kind of thing again. And like I was trying to come up with things last night. I was going through a situation, and my ex asked me, she goes, well, what are you going to say? I said, I don't know, probably something about God, I think. So, <laughs> And she just kind of laughed. She goes, well, isn't that what a testimony is? I said, well, yeah. So I started thinking about that, and I, I read in the bulletin today that Dakota's notes right here, and it says James 1.17, and that's exactly like what I was thinking already anyways, because every good gift comes from above. Come on. And, I mean, I've heard jokes talk about, you know, people say something about, oh, you know what you get when you play a country song backwards? You get your truck back, you get your house back, you get your wife back, you get your kids, you, your dog, you get everything back. But it's a condition. It's a condition on when you surrender it to him and to him only. And I know that I can't do it alone. And I know that he walks with me when I do it every day. And, and it's only by example that, like, helps you do it. And those two people right there, my mom and my dad. Every reason to give up on me in the world. You guys are amazing. And I thank God every day for you too. And every other good thing in my life. I love you guys. Thank you. Let's give it for James. Amen. Uh, I'm always, always encouraged to hear the testimonies of how God's, uh, serve, uh, you know, just transforming lives and how we get to participate in that. And one of the ways we get to do that is, is by um, being a champion builder. And, you know, I have that on auto. Like, you know, the, my giving comes automatically because I don't want to forget. You know, it just does it. And so um, here at the Rich Christopher Union Church, we truly do see giving as an extension of our worship. And uh, I put a little QR code. There's like, oh, make it easier. Like, yeah, the like, QR code helps out. Um, but, you know, uh, we, you know, <laughs> I, I'm just always amazed, like, God, like, you just give us enough. You know, it's like, it's like manna, we only have enough. And, and, I, and I see, it sounds like, you know, my, uh, my sense is that the more that we receive, the more that we, we get to do. And so God's, as we give more, God does more in our giving, right? Not that God's limited by our giving, but he chooses our giving to expand his kingdom, right? And that's why we look in 2 Corinthians um, uh, chapter 9 when we look at, you know, the sower and the seed, that we, that we are called to sow seeds in the kingdom of God, and that when we sow seeds in the kingdom of God, that we reap a harvest, right? And I don't know about you, but I want to reap a harvest, right? Because I serve the Lord of the harvest, the Lord of revival, right? And I want to just keep pressing and moving into that, amen? And I remember Russell this morning was saying, saying God, whatever it costs, I'll give you that. If it's my truck, I'll give, I'll give you my truck. I'll give you whatever it is, God. Uh, it's yours because it's yours anyways. So I'm just, you're just letting me steward it. So with that, I'm going to invite our ushers to take their place. I'm going to invite you to just pray with me this morning as we consider our giving. And so, Lord, we just come before you, Lord, you knowing and acknowledging that you are the Lord of the harvest. You are the Lord of the harvest. And you, you give us seeds, God, to steward. And so we steward them, God, by saying yes and amen to whatever you are asking us to do, God, to give faithfully, spontaneously, God, through our, our offerings, our tithes, God, our, our, our contributions, God, that your kingdom, God, will be expanded, God. And I pray that you allow us to be stewards, good stewards of all the provision that you give us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, let's just go ahead and pass out the offering baskets. I want to invite to our, our platform, Pastor Dakota, our lead pastor here at the Richcrest Vineyard Church. So blessed. So encouraged. Amen. Great message this morning, and just you want to tune in. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you, sir. Oh, who's ready for a good morning? Who's ready for a good week? Ah, oh, about three or four of us. I said, who's ready for a good week? Come on. There we go. Get you guys alive here this morning. Man, I am excited. I am so incredibly filled up with God's goodness. I loved worship this morning. It's amazing to be together and to get to worship our God together. 
and the fact that when we gather and when we worship, his presence is exponentially encountered. We, we, we serve the God of encounter. Today might be a little wild, so you'll have to bear with me. We serve the God of encounter. I said in worship this morning that we're not waiting for revival and revival's not coming, but that we are in revival because 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross and paid for sin and said, I'm sending back the comforter, revival came on the earth and it has never stopped. Revival is, it, it, it's not just, you know, all of a sudden God decided he was in a good mood for a week or a day or a couple hours or a couple of weeks. God decided he was in a good mood about humanity when he gave his son Jesus for us. And then he made a decision that I'm going to now make my dwelling place into hearts of humanity. God made a decision Amen. then. And so sometimes we, we, we feel like we're waiting or on revival or that revival might come. But I'm here to tell you this morning, 10 years ago, when God grabbed me and he shook me and he woke me up and he said, Dakota, I'm God, live for me. Revival has never stopped in my life. Oh, oh okay, I, I, I got to preach louder then so we can, we can wake up. <laughs> revival has never stopped in my life. Revival is the indwelling spirit living with us and then manifesting his glory when we gather in worship. We're going to talk about revival the next couple of weeks. And I'm a little stirred right now about this idea of revival being a way of life. Revival it's a way of life. When you hear that word, you'll probably think all sorts of different things, right? Some of us probably have a different picture or idea about what revival is. Some of us might think revival is a good church service. Some of us might think about the old crusades and the tent revivals that were put on in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Some of you might think about the big massive conferences. Those are all amazing and those are all aspects of revival. Some of us might think about powerful, engaged, dynamic worship as revival. Some of us might think singing, dancing, shouting, people, you know, just being, you know, it, it stimulated, inspired by God and ignited in their faith and full of passion as revival. You might think of revival as like the moment that tangible, weighty glory and the presence of God just fills a room and people are changed. That might be revival for you. You might think of revival as when you got filled with the Spirit and spoke in tongues. You might think of revival as when you went to youth camp and all the speakers were awesome and the worship was great. You might think of revival in all sorts of ways. You might think of revival in a very real sense. And that the, mean, the word means to bring to life. Things that are dormant, sleeping, dead, stagnant, become alive again and so you might think of someone like James and you might think that that's revival 67 days is revival you might think 33 people living in a refuge dorm is revival you might think of all sorts of things as revival and I'm here to tell you that yes all of those things are revival because all of those things are a result of the kingdom of God manifest in the earth. The kingdom, the Bible said that he's the one who comes and his kingdom is without end. His kingdom is revival. Now I will present to you that there are times in humanity that, that we engage that more and there are times that humanity engages God less. But all of the availability of an open heaven, of an accessible God, who's rich in mercy, tender in kindness, and extravagant in power, is available. 
All of that came through the man Christ Jesus and then rested upon us through the Holy Spirit. That has not changed. Revival is now. Revival is right now because there's an open heaven to us. The kingdom of God is available here and now. Yeah, you can clap for God. (laughs) Whatever you got to do to get it deep in your bones. Because that's what this is about. This is about getting the reality of the kingdom of God and the indwelling spirit in you. Deep in your bones and to where it affects every area of your life. I'm not satisfied until all of me yields to all of him. This is what we're talking about. It, 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 it's a really clear, simple message. I'm going to just probably just hammer it in there for, for a few moments this morning. What we are saying is that the kingdom of God and revival is dynamic. It's dynamic. It's influential. Revival is effective, tangible. That's why we give it a word. We've taken the kingdom of God and how it manifests its presence and its effectiveness in the earth. And we say, oh, that's revival. Jesus is in the business of revival. Come on, he's in the business of transforming the world. Come on, go into all the ends of the earth. Make disciples, baptize them in the Father, baptize them in the Spirit. Come on, God has a plan for humanity. It's never changed. He wants you, I, and everybody we know to get filled with the Holy Spirit and give our life over to following Jesus and being made in his image. That message is never going to change. It's never going to change. And that means power is available. That means change, transformation, healing is available to you and I. The kingdom of God and revival is right now. We've got to become people who believe enough about God that we would carry Him We would host the spirit who's dwelling in us. When another comes to live inside of you, that should strike you as interesting. That that should change things about your life. I'm not comfortably alone doing whatever I want to do anymore. I'm now hosting the very presence and spirit of God dwelling in me. I now have become the sanctuary. I now have become the altar. I now have become the dwelling place of God in which I host His presence every single day of my life, whether sleep or awake. He's with me. And so here we are, God's children, filled with His presence and Spirit. And what we should do is take that now then into the earth and have a collision with darkness in which change occurs and we call it revival. It's you getting filled enough to go into the earth with what you have. And to have a collision with the darkness inside of you. And to have the collision with the darkness in the world around you. And see God win the battle. And see change take place in your life and the lives of people around you. I hope this is exciting this morning. (laughs) It sure is for me. Everything in life for us is revival. It's all revival. Everything, the worship, the messages, the gatherings, the fun times, the good times, the fellowship, the connection, the healing, the prayer, all those, those things in our life, even when the brokenness is there, because the brokenness just creates an opportunity for you to be aware of the goodness. Because when there's broken things, Jesus draws near and he heals and he restores and he revives. And so every once in a while, when, when, when something dark comes around me and it tries to like entrap my heart or my mind, I have this flash and I think, oh my God, what an opportunity to see you dominate God, to see your spirit dominate in me and to see that flesh and darkness flees when you draw near everything in our life is revival come on we're revival people look at your neighbor and say you are revival revival. 
We are of the revival. And I just believe that God is doing something with his church right now where he's bringing us into a clarity and a focus where we can see clearly again, where we can understand the beauty that's available in his presence and that all other desires are being stripped away and being pulled away because they're no longer appetizing to us because my sole desire and purpose is to know the one who has filled me to be an affectionate one for Jesus, for adoration to release from my life and for everything about me because cognizant of the fact I'm the indwelling oh come on (laughs) that his spirit is dwelling in me it's all we need to know to live a victorious life in God We, we try to find all these other things but at the end of the day it's the nearness of God It's his presence that changes us and causes us to triumph in this life. I'm trying to go somewhere with this, I promise. (laughs) I want to shape for a moment. I want to to use a few uh, formation scriptures to help us understand. Maybe you're like, whoa, this is a lot coming at me. And I, I, I get that. I'm, I'm a bit much at times, right, Scott? <laughs> Just forgive me, I'm all, you know, juiced up. I've got the Holy Ghost and coffee, so <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> man on fire. <laughs> and, and, and so I want to just take a moment to look at a few formation scriptures to, to articulate and to really illuminate like where the scripture is highlighting for us this lifestyle of revival. That revival is a way of life. That the kingdom of God is a way of life and it has suddenly come upon us that we would take up residency within that world. And there is so many places in scripture where Jesus articulates this for us, where the Holy Spirit through the penmanship of authors uh, in the New Testament letters has illuminated for us what I'm talking about. I'm talking about two worlds you can live in. Everybody say two worlds. worlds. But two worlds you can live in as a human being. Matthew 6, 9 through 10 says this, pray then like this, you know this one, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, let's try that again, on earth as it is in heaven. (laughs) On earth as it is in heaven, two worlds colliding, heaven invading earth. Uh, us being a people who get to move in this reality that God can do what he wants to do from heaven on earth, from heaven in earth, that God can manifest the delicacies and, and all of the rich things of his kingdom and his glory on earth. But we're predisposed to some Christianity in our life that has us mechanically waiting, only waiting for heaven in the afterlife. Now I know none of y'all have ever been locked into that type of thinking in this room, but imagine for a moment, right, some place in our life where, where we have the, this real, like, deeply embedded construct that heaven is coming after, and we don't see Matthew 6, 9 through 10, that says your kingdom, you know, it, it comes right here, right now, and what your will is, is done on earth, that's the mind of God. That's, that's the articulation of God. That's the creativity of God. That, that's the power of God. That's the workmanship of His hands. That's the creative nature of who He is from heaven being done on earth. I, I, I tend to think that, 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 that that's going to make the world a little more colorful. 
It, it's going to make the world ha- have some elements to it. When heaven is there, it feels a little lighter. It, it feels a little bit easier. There's, there's peace in the midst of our being. Right? That, that what God is wanting to do, it's happening from heaven in invading earth. This is, is a construct for the kingdom of God here and now. The kingdom of God here and now. And it's the idea that it affects things in the earth. Just play around with that in your, in, in your mind and in your heart a little bit. That, oh, that, that changes things. When I wake up, it, it's not just, you know, eat, sleep, be merry. It's not just, uh, you know, school and challenges and struggles and some good. It's, it's not just life the way we've known it. But it's, it's a life in a world and a reality in which heaven is present with us. He has an open heaven. Are you guys with me this morning? I mean, ponder this. This should change your life. It actually has an intent purpose to change our entire life, make us completely new. Colossians 1, 13 through 14 says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Two worlds. Two worlds in which he has transferred us, moved us from one world to the other world. Just making sense. I, I, mean, I'm open to, I'm like, it, there are two worlds we can live in. Revival's not actually that hard. Revival's God's plan. Revival's exactly what God wants to do. Revival is the work of His being. Two worlds were transferred from the dark world into the world of His beloved Son. And everything about us begins to transform in that place. The way we think, the way we feel, the way we experience and engage people. All right, Matthew 5, 1 says, Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. It, there's a tendency when we start getting real like, you know, uh, intense about God's kingdom and Holy Spirit living in us. There, there's a tendency and sometimes things can get mixed in there that, that will, you know, we don't need to talk about good instruction. We don't need to talk about wisdom. We don't need to talk about holiness. We don't need to talk about righteousness. We don't need to mention sin. We don't need to mention that. But, but, but right here, Matthew 5, 1 brings in another dynamic and layer of the kingdom in which it is important to teach godly instruction in which it is important to understand wisdom from a human mindset, from a mindset of sin and righteousness, that that there's still an elemental influence from God saying, no, 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 yeah, I, I want you. To, to, to follow my instruction. I want you to, to see the letter and let it transform you. And so the letter in the kingdom of God begins to influence and change us. We're, we're in the kingdom of darkness. It's, a, it's about works. And it's about just trying to look pretty and trying to hold it together where over here it it begins to just get nailed into your heart and manifest transformation. And Jesus begins to rule over everything inside of you. But wisdom is still vital. Instruction is still healthy. Righteousness is still God's plan. All right, John 3 and 5. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water 
and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. These aren't really long. I mean, these are kind of simple scriptures. I mean, they're clear. That that you're going to enter into the kingdom. You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to go from one world to the next world. Revival is about living in the world, the kingdom of God. Two births. Two births. You know what takes place between two births? A death. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That we would both die with him and reign with him. That there's a death to the self-life. There's a death to self-life. And that we rise with him in newness of life. Is, is, are y'all with me? Yeah. All right, I'm making sure. I don't, I'm, I don't want to go too far without you. <laughs> Someone said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Let's go somewhere together. Something happens when God's church like comes together in unity and gets singular about who he is, about what he wants to do, and it becomes less about me and more about his kingdom. I, I, okay. Matthew 6, 19. I will give you the, everybody say keys. keys. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. There is a, two worlds. I'm just saying two worlds. We have access to God's world. Revival is about consistently living in God's world the awareness of his kingdom and the virtues of his kingdom in the ozone, the atmosphere of his kingdom and his presence. This is revival. And we've been given keys. Keys. Say, I got the keys. Come on, come on, better than that. I got the keys. Oh, come on. Some of y'all aren't getting it yet. I got the keys. I got the keys. Got my own set. This is not the one that says do not duplicate. This is the one that says multiply a lot. I have the keys to where what I release according to the authority of Jesus on earth moves up into heaven and heaven responds to it and manifests it. There... Revival is about the fact we have keys to open up doors to, 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 to make things change and look different on earth. Got the keys. Mark 1.15 says the time is fulfilled. Again, not something that we are waiting for. Something we are living in and is an available to us and we enter in. Everybody say, enter in. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent means you are living in this world. Hi. You turn. And come live in this world. Repent. And believe. In the gospel. The fullness. uh, 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 Of the work of Jesus. And the work of the cross. And the coming kingdom that rested upon the earth. And the Holy Spirit. That came to live in us. And help us navigate the kingdom life. Okay. Okay. Luke 10 and 9, some of y'all like this right here. Come on, heal the sick. (laughs) Come on, cast out the devils. Come on. And say to them, the kingdom of God 
has come near to you. The kingdom of God and revival looks like power. Looks like God doing stuff on earth. Oh, okay. Okay. A refuge doesn't exist outside of revival. RVC doesn't exist outside of revival. In our own strength, and in our, in our own abilities, in, in our own efforts, doesn't measure up. Th- things that happen, the healing, the breakthrough, the change 67 days, happens because someone got moved from one world to the other. Living the kingdom is revival and it is about the fullness of the new life in Jesus and the indwelling spirit. It's dynamic. It's a dynamic world. It's a developed world. He'd been doing this a long time. God has been doing this a very, very, very long time. And so this isn't about us kind of mustarding up what we can do. It's about us moving from one world into the next and thinking, oh, it's quite nice over here. It's very peaceful. It's calm. I'm accepted. I both know and am known. Healing, power, breakthrough, change. A lot of good stuff going on over in this world. It's a developed, thorough, dynamic kingdom. It, it, it didn't just all of a sudden be because I walked into it. <laughs> I know sometimes, I know sometimes we think, oh, I came in here, this is a, dude, we're going to get the party started now. No, 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 no. God been doing this a long time before you and I. It's a developed world. It's a full world. Picture for a moment uh, all the things we just mentioned. And, and, and like Jesus is, is sort of giving to us like the nuts and bolts of the world, the kingdom. And what we should focus in on. And that really things should become more simple in our life. He brings a simplicity to life. In which we experience righteousness, peace, and joy. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not a matter of eat or drink. But it's righteousness, peace, and joy. (laughs) So... So, so if I find myself in life drifting from those three things, I'm drifting, peace is gone, righteousness is questionable, what is going on? Do we then try to labor? Oh, let me get myself fixed. No, 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 no. You, you, you got to work. Yes, move yourself back into his world it's about it's a matter of awareness it's a matter of decision it's a matter of moving in you got to check some things at the door though I think that that sometimes is the hard part for us. We're, we're over here, you know, dealing with stuff and, and we're, we're going, but it's like we just don't know how to let stuff go. I'm hoping this, I just really am hoping this helps somebody this morning. That's my only, my only hope. <laughs> come right here, James. Come on. We, all right, right here. We've got to learn to let some things go. I'm going to jump in, in, into these notes if you want to follow along. There's some, uh, some notes in that handout for you. It reads like this. As we realize that revival is the way of life in the kingdom of God, we develop in our understanding and how that affects my life and the life of my church community. Some essentials that apply to living the kingdom of God corporately as the church and individually in my life are first off, hunger. Hunger. Now I'm going to get in here for a minute. 
notability to people who walk in the kingdom and live with the presence of God, hosting God's spirit in a tangible, notable way. They are hungry people. There is nothing else on planet earth like an environment where people are hungry, real and raw hunger for God. I, I, I just want, maybe you don't understand sometimes why we worship the way we worship. You know, I, I think sometimes um, we just move in it, but, but people are coming in the fold along the way, and, and maybe you wonder, like, man, why is he sweating so much? Like, what is going on? He is really serious. You know, uh, that worship, man, that guy's fingers have got to be about to fall off by now. I mean, he has just been going and going and going. It's because we're hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry for God. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I, as I've been living in this world over here for a little bit of time, my appetite changed. My, my appetite has changed. And, and, and if something tries to come from that world at me, oh, uh, it's distasteful to me. I begin to recognize what's premium. I begin to know what's premium in my life. Come on, I begin to know what's rich and worthwhile and what is worth me getting involved in. You, you develop a hunger and an appetite for the presence of God. Can I tell you that I was the, I mean, it's not about me, but the level of darkness and embeddedness I was into this other world with addiction and bondage and brokenness and all kinds of dark stuff. Like, like it was so bad. And, and then I got a taste of this other world over here and it has stole my entire life. I, I, I don't... And Jesus says, what you definitely don't want to do is hang out somewhere over here in the crosshairs. What you don't want to do is be lukewarm. What you don't want to do is be trying to have one hand here and one hand here because that's going to rip you apart. Because if you've been over here, you know what it tastes like in the goodness of God. It just, things taste good over here. They feel good. The air's nicer. Come on, the birds are chirping. The grass is green. The trees are beautiful and fruitful. Oh, come on, there's a nearby stream that's just lifting a little bit of sound of water on it. This world is just better over here. It's better. It's better and sometimes subtle. Sometimes subtle which kingdom you are planting yourself in. So we've got to be careful. We've got to know what it is that God is pulling us into. And we certainly do not want to sit in the crosshairs. But I'm telling you right now that hunger marks your life for more of God. It... If you could pray one thing when you wake up in the morning, if you could pray, God, make me hungry for you. I, I don't always just have it there. Sometimes I gotta wake up and I gotta make a decision. Which world am I gonna live in? God, would you make me hungry for you? You, you don't have the ability on your own all the time to, to, to give yourself an appetite for God, but His gracious, kind, merciful nature comes and deposits to you a fresh portion of hunger. I, I, maybe some of you here today, I sense God is bringing a renewal of passion this morning. Come on, that, that it seems like the fire is just kind of, it, 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 it's just burning out a little bit. And God's saying, I'm getting ready to put some kerosene on your fire today. And I'm going to fill you up afresh and anew with passion and zeal and strength and fire for the days ahead. Come on, that, that he's going to fill you with hunger again. 
with hunger again. And so everywhere we go in our life, we bring hunger. Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. They will be filled. Sometimes in your life when you're hungry, you got to ask for some food, right? <laughs> I, I, I sense there's some need there and I need to, to get filled up. God has always been in us and you, God. Meaning that he deals with us together and individually. And so these next couple of moments, I'm going to break down this idea of hunger. Look at this in, in reflection of, uh, of your church. Like, oh man, we come hungry. Come on. Like, we're the hungry ones. You, I mean, come on. Sometimes you just got to get yourself moving. And you got to respond to this world that's right here that you can live in. And so together we come as like, we want to be noted as hungry ones. Come on. If they say anything about RVC and you and me and our families, man, let them say they were hungry for God. Come on. They were hungry for God. That's all we got. We don't have good strength. Strategies. We don't have good ideas. We, we come on. We don't have it all figured out. All we're saying is we found a God who's good, and, I, and I'm hungry for Him. That's all we need. Hunger. The hungry are filled. They're not left alone. They're not left out there unfilled, thirsty, drying up. No, the hungry get filled. Come on, if the world looks dried up around you, then you need to get hunger in your bones for God again. It becomes colorful where hungry people are. Hunger brings color. Amen. Come on, the presence of God moves and begins to do some beautiful things. Like he, he might be over here just softly, gently like moving out some stuff in one person's life. This person over here might be so lost and, you know, just twirling and flags and, and they're just lost in beauty and majesty and one person might be over here just getting delivered in his presence and weeping and just fi finding out that what they thought God was going to want them to pay up on he said no no that's been paid all you got to do is enter in and so then they're just having this encounter of a rich kind God it, it brings color to the room on joy. We want to be a house of joy. We want to be a house when we see each other, we're excited, we're anticipating, we're, we're, we're full of love and grace and favor and benefit towards one another. We want to be a house of joy. A presence brings color. Let me tell you this. Hunger is like digging a well. I want to articulate for you uh, for a moment uh, maybe like why sometimes we feel like, you know, if God's kingdom is there and available and, and then why does sometimes we not feel it, experience it or know it or, or why does sometimes I go to church and I don't really feel God's presence or, or maybe there's some questions out there that you might ask yourself and, and there could be all kinds of things going on that might create that setting in which it feels void of God's presence. But can I tell you, if someone comes and digs a well, it's going to change. Uh, sometimes, and, and trust me, God has not tapped this thing like so unreachable. It's not, a, it's not a well that you, you're just like out here, like get off the excavator. We need a backhoe to dig this thing up. Come on, shovels aren't going to cut it. We need jackhammers. No, no, I'm talking like just, just dig in there. Just, just, just come with hunger. And hunger's kind of like moving the, the stuff off the top of the well. It's kind of like untapping the well. It, it, it's digging up the well and saying, oh my God, there's a rich kingdom. And he pours out generously. And he pours out on us. And we just come in and we dig a little bit. It, 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 that's what hunger's like. Uh, hunger's like this. Hunger's like a decision. Because, because if you came 
and you didn't have to dig anything up, how would God know you made a decision? How, how would he know that you had decided to reject this world and to move into this world? It, it, it's like a decision. Hunger is a decision. It's an instrument of decision. Not of this labor, uh, just of decision. Like, yeah, I got two worlds I can walk into right now. I walk in, into life, and into myself. I have two worlds. I got to choose one or the other. There's a decision to make. And hunger is simply a marking and an instrument of decision. Oh God, I choose you. I need you. I'm hungry. I want you. I desire you. We bring ourselves hungry. We, we, we hold our cups out knowing that he's the God who fills. It's not really, I mean, you might get loud and wild and crazy. It takes all that for me. It might not take all that for you. For you, it might, it might, it might be, oh Lord, would you fill me today? Come on, come on, let's do it together right here, right now. Oh Jesus, I want more. Would you fill me with more? Uh, as I was preparing for my message yesterday, I was suddenly stopped. And he was like, just, just draw from the well now. I'm, I'm hungry, God. I want you. I need you. Nothing else satisfies. Would you make me hungry even in parts of my life where I'm not hungry? God, give to me passion and zeal that my heart might be inflamed with desire for you. You make a decision. You, 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 you got to make a decision. He's available. Revival is in full swing. Come on. It didn't get shut down for, for COVID-19. It ain't getting shut down for your mess. Oh, the kingdom doesn't close up. It's not closing up shop. See you back on Tuesday. We'll be here. No, 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 no. No. It's a matter of decision. Hunger is an instrument of your decision. Which world do you choose? I, I want to articulate for you. I'm, I'm, I know I'm way, way, but get the worship team up here. I know I'm, I'm going long. I want to articulate for you this idea of hunger. What happens when you're hungry? You get hunger that's right. Yeah, yeah. Something in your body starts telling you, man, you need to satisfy this hunger. You, you need to put something in here so that this thing can get settled down. You might get a little gurgle in there. Some of y'all might not be hungry, but you might be hangry. Thank you. Somebody's with me. You, you know, there, there's something going on inside that says, I, I need to put some sustenance in here. Can I propose to you this morning that some things in your life, things that irritate you, irritation arises, frustration, anger, anxiety, fear, regret, unforgiveness. When these things start coming on you, heaviness, lust, when, when these things start coming upon you, can I present to you this morning that it might just simply be hunger pains? Can, can, can I present to you this morning that just like your body knows you need sustenance, your spirit knows you need the presence of God and nothing else will satisfy? Come on, we overcomplicate this stuff. We got books and libraries and bookshelves for the books. Talk about how you're going to get out of this mess and how you're going to get out of that mess. How you're going to fix your finance problems. How you're going to fix your anxiety. You need 15 steps. No, no, no. I need one step. My God's good and He's sufficient for all. I got hunger pains. Oh, come on. I got hunger pains. All that irritation, all that self-doubt, come on, all that self-loathing, all that depression, all that I'm not good enough, all that stuff going on in you, he's just telling you, you're hungry for my presence. Oh, don't you know, I'm wide open all day for you. 
10,000 lesser problems will be solved when we understand we're to be a hungry people for God's presence and when things in your life when that stuff inside of you starts heating up and you're getting steamed oh y'all playing this morning and you're getting irritated and bothered and you don't trust what they're saying and and, and, and you're just you know doubting about their faithfulness and, and their loyalty or or you just can't forgive them or, or all this and you're just not good enough and all the hopelessness come on oh the hopelessness that comes upon us sometimes and God's saying oh you don't have to figure all that out all you need to do is eat something drink of me eat of me Jesus says eat of my flesh drink of my blood. Oh, it sounds gory, doesn't it? Oh, but he's trying to tell you there's a world in which your spirit can be fully satisfied. We're talking about revival. We're talking about a service, a conference. I got a God living on the inside of me that satisfies me for everything. We are the revival. Revival is our life. He, he, he's forever living in us. Second thing, essential to the church and the individual per- person living in revival is expectancy. Expectancy. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down down from the fa- from one world to the other world okay we're coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change you can expect god to move when you show him hunger not because you're clever enough not because you earned it but because he's unmovable and he's unchangeable he's a God who has no variation you can expect him to be there because he doesn't move he's not changing he's not going to switch up on you oh you liked me last week you don't like me so much this week huh Oh, you, 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 you were on my side, then. you? Not on my... No. No. No variation. No change. That's why you can expect for Him to be there. He is the Lord who finds pleasure in filling us. It's actually God's pleasure. It delights Him. It satisfies Him. It fulfills fills him to fill you up don't believe me Luke 12 32 fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom (laughs) you'll never be more hungry for it for you than he is for you it, it, it's, it's, it's his complete fullness of joy that we would abide in this kingdom and that we wouldn't leave. Oh, we'd be so satisfied over here. And that we'd expect when we get here and when we choose hunger and we enter in that he'd be faithful with his presence. He'd be faithful with his presence. Revival is ours because it's the Father's pleasure to give it to us. In our expectancy, however, we should not, or rather we should, we should bear in mind when we move in expectancy that He is a sovereign God and He alone has the goods and He alone knows how to move those goods in our life and so we shouldn't expect we know exactly how he'll move just that he will move lastly is experience experience over time we gain experience in hosting God's presence you don't get good at anything without regularity you, you, you don't become comfortable or familiar with anything in your life 
until you spend time with it. You grow in it. There's a growing in our ability to manage ourselves into kingdom life. To maintain our consistency in the kingdom world. There's an experience to it. And this is both for our own life. God, I host your presence today. (laughs) God, I'm with you. I'm in you. I live in your kingdom. May everything in my life today be reflective of that. Like we, we grow in it. We gain experience. Also, God not only blesses the person, he blesses places like, like his churches, his gathered, assembled, beloved body. And, and, and not just our church or, or independent like churches but the big C church, like there's an experience of growing in how we host God's presence. And so in God's presence, we learn to grow in it. And sometimes experience is about preparation. Everybody say preparation. So, so we prepare to meet as a church. Uh, I'm sure you understand and know that. That before we come and gather, we prepare, we plan, we have an order of service, and this is an important thing. But I, I want you to know that isn't something that's designed to happen to you. Like, oh, you know, come consume, consumer Christianity. Like, oh, they prepared to, to do this. Certain. No, 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 it's not they. Uh-uh. No, no. We come to consume Him. Nothing else. And so in our preparation, it's not about, it's not about us preparing for something to to just, you know, to happen to you, right? Here's what I'm trying to say. What I'm really trying to say is preparation for corporate worship is not practice for performance. It's familiarity with the presence. I'll say it again. When when we prepare for corporate worship, it's not about practice for performance. It's about familiarity with His presence. About understanding what do you want to do here, God. Well, well, what do you want to do with us when we gather? I know you want us to come hungry and expectant and, and to prepare, but we are wide open for you to come and move in an incredible way. Experience is important. Preparation is important. Pastor Jerry was telling me the other day that when he worked at the Pentagon, that, that, that they would get these VIPs and three-star, four-star generals come in and all this stuff would, would happen, but, 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 but they would sit down as a team and they would think, oh, well, how are we gonna greet and host that person, and, and, and how are we gonna how are we gonna set the table for him, and how are we gonna do? Be, 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 because preparation is about honor. I, I give uh, I give time in preparing right here, not because I think I'm clever. Because I honor God and that he might come and speak to us. Uh, That he might come and move in here and he'll feel our hunger and do something. Preparation's about honor. Honor is intentional. Honor is thoughtful. Uh, uh, Honor, it, it creates space and time to consider what the other might want. And so, so preparation experience is important because we're saying, oh God, what do you want from us? How, how, how would you like for us to worship you? What, what words would you want for us to use to glorify you? Come on, let's stand together as we get ready to close and worship. I know some of you have children in the children's ministry. And so if you want to go ahead and make your way, uh, please feel free to do that. Uh, um, ministry team, if you'd be up at the front. We're just going to move right into a little bit of ministry space. Um, yeah, if you want hunger, if you're hungry and you want more, some of my ministry partners up here, 
Uh, if you're hungry and you want more, you'd like somebody to pray or prophesy to you, agree uh, with what God's doing, just come forward. They're up here. Father, we're hungry. We're hungry for more. Would you fill us?